today we are on the new overhead camera and we're going to talk about this special little USB cable. So I have recently upgraded finally to 4K. I picked up four new Panasonic mirrorless cameras last month. One of them is the Panasonic GX80 that you're watching right now. There is another one over there, which is my main camera, which I'll be using for pretty much all of my videos. But I also picked up a couple of G80s as well. This has meant that I have added a bunch of new batteries. And this isn't all of them because there's one in this camera, there's one in this camera, there's one in this camera, and there's one in my other GX80. And these all get added to the Nikon DSLR batteries I already have. And these Nikon DSLR batteries I already have, and a bunch more that are currently inside cameras. And they get added to all of the Sony NPF style batteries that I also have. Wouldn't it be great if I could replace all of these with this? Well, that's exactly what this cable is designed to let you do. So let's talk a little bit about USB power delivery. And if you want to really get into USB power delivery, I will link a video up. Is it that way? Great Scott did a video on USB power delivery explaining everything about what it is. Um, that's, that's well worth a watch if you haven't seen it yet. I'll put a link in the description below as well. But USB power delivery essentially changes the game for the voltage and power that USB power banks like these can put out. It used to be that USB only put out a standard five volts at whatever current, depending on whether you were plugging into your computer or into a charger on the wall or whatever. We now get the choice of a bunch of different voltages and this one supports five volt, nine volt, 12 volt, 15 volt and 20 volt and it's become standard on a lot of smaller batteries as well, like these little ones here. Now, all of these camera batteries and the NPF batteries, these all run at 7.4 volts nominal, which means that that's the sort of ideal voltage that these will all put out all the time, but the way the technology works, they don't. At full charge, these are about 8.4 volts, and then as they die, they drop down to around about seven. That's how the camera knows how much power's left inside them. But because these all go up to about 8.4 volts, it means that most cameras can safely handle nine volts, which is where these come in. And if I grab one of my Nikons, so here I have my Nikon D7000, and let me zoom this in. You can see underneath that it actually says seven stroke, nine volts. So it takes between seven and nine volts but two and a half amps to power this thing. So one of the issues that you might run into with some batteries is that they can't put out quite enough current. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but fortunately, cameras like these generally tend not to really draw a lot. Surprisingly, and it's odd because like mirrorless are notoriously bad for having really bad battery life. DSLRs, great battery life, yet DSLRs tend to draw more power at once. Um, but let's, uh, let's go through this cable and test it and see exactly what it does. Here I've got the Asus Zenfone 5, here I've got the OnePlus 7 Pro, and I want to talk a little about what USB power delivery is and, and sort of why it exists. The 5 volt standard USB has a lot of limitations when it comes to charging up devices that you want to charge quickly. I mean, your phone, in theory, lasts all day but then it could potentially take all night to charge up again for the next day. And if you forget to put it on charge and then you need it the next day, you want it to be able to charge up quick. So phone device manufacturers started developing all their own different proprietary quick charge methods. And you know, you get the charger for one phone and then it wouldn't work with a different phone. And it just made the whole thing a hassle. So USB power delivery is kind of an attempt to unify all those different quick charge systems and, and devices that require more voltage and, and 
perhaps more current. You can see if I take the OnePlus 7 Pro, which has its own proprietary quick charge format, if I plug a USB cable there, and I plug the other end into this, which is my little USB power meter, if I then plug this into my batteries type C socket. Like most devices, you can see that the OnePlus 7 Pro is pulling five volts at about an amp and a half. Now, if we unplug this, and I actually only just learned that this supports USB power delivery. I didn't know that it did. But if I plug this into there, and then this into here, it'll start at five volts, and then it'll have a little bit of a think, then it goes off, and when it comes back on, hey, look at that, we're now at nine volts. So there is a chip inside the phone that communicates with a chip inside this battery and says, hey, give me nine volts, I don't want five volts. And that same sort of principle is being applied in this cable. This is not just a standard plug it in and get five volts out. This has a little chip in here. And this is actually a prototype cable that was sent to me. They sent me a couple of these. Um, to, to test and play with and I can't tell you who sent them just yet but there's, there's, there's a little circuit and a chip inside here which when you plug it in it tells the battery hey give me 9 volts not 5 volts and you can tell that there's actually a little circuit device in here simply by the fact that it turns on so there you can see we're drawing 9 volts at like one and a half milliamps which is probably you know, just to sort of power the electronics in there. So it uses very little current. And you'll see on the other end of here that there is a standard 5.5 by 2.1 mil barrel jack. I don't have my Nikon handy, but the, the dummy battery for my Nikon DSLR, the ENEL 15 one that I got on Amazon or eBay, I'll, I'll pop a link to one in the description. This plugs straight into here and then it just goes to the dummy battery. On the Panasonic, it's also a female socket. This is the one for the G80. This also has a female socket, uh, but this one is 4.8 by 1.7 millimeters. So I have to have this cable to plug into here to turn it into the same as that. And then I need another cable. Um, I actually have a double adapter, uh, which plugs in there and then plugs in there. But the problem is this is 2.5 mil in the diameter and these are 2.1 so that the inside contact doesn't always reach so I've just made up my own little cable from a, a couple of barrel connector pigtails that I had laying around so if I plug this in here plug this in here and then grab a camera and I think there's a battery in this yeah so this is the battery that normally lives inside this camera and uh, it's just a, a generic version of the BLC12 battery that works in here. And this is the dummy battery. This is actually the official Panasonic dummy battery. Um, I, I found someone on eBay who had these for sale because apparently these are discontinued. Uh, but what I'm going to do is unplug that and then we will push that in here. Now that we've got the battery in, I will plug this back in. And you'll see this probably spark back into life maybe yes no no let's turn the camera on oh you can see we've already got power we'll turn the lcd on so there we go so now we're drawing nine volts at 300 ish milliamps 300 to sort of 320 milliamps you can see like the entire cable loop this is it this is this is my panasonic G80 being powered by a USB battery. If I take this out, just to show that this isn't doing anything funky, and then turn the camera on. Everything still works. We're still getting our power to the camera. This is putting out nine volts. It's all coming down this one single cable, and that's it. So they sent me two of this cable because I have 2G80 so I want to be able to power them both from USB batteries but they also sent me this one and this one is very prototype um, <laughs> this is actually a type c socket on here and it's 
it's all a little bit janky and it's all heat shrunk and but it's a prototype so it's what you can sort of expect really but the whole point of this one is that if you've got this on top of a tripod and you've no way to mount your power bank or say you're mounting this in a car and you you know you've got all your power in the trunk if you want a really really long usb cable let me turn this off, unplug this, this, plug that one into there. You can see if we grab a, the regular type C to type C cable, if we just plug this into here, you'll see that by default, this takes five volts. As soon as we plug this in, this goes up to nine volts. I just wanted to put that in just to make sure that this was actually working and drawing nine volts because if it's only drawing five and you feed that into your camera it can you know under voltage in your camera is potentially just as bad as all over voltage because it can mean that the mechanical things like your shutter don't move quite the way they're supposed to and they can seize up and get stuck so you want to make sure or at least I wanted to make sure with these prototype cables that they're actually putting out the right voltage so if I plug this into here now and I turn on the camera, are we gonna work? No, so th there's, there's something strange going on. It's not always powering up and I'm not, in oh, I think that wasn't possibly plugged in all the way. There we go, that's what it was. I hadn't plugged this in all the way. So that's it. So now this cable can be, well, as long as you like. I mean, I've got a three meter cable that's type C to type C that I could just plug right into here and, and use that. Um, but this basically now means that I can make this as long as I need. I can, as long as I'm powering it from a battery that's got USB power delivery or a charger that has USB power delivery, I can run this pretty much as long as I need. I'm not sure what the maximum length is on power delivery. And I know the longer the cable, the less power it can deliver, but I believe it should still be able to negotiate the voltages. One thing that they did mention with this cable was that it, it 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 has issues with some dslrs or it's not that the cable has issues it doesn't it's that the batteries have issues because one of the things i mentioned before this camera pulls around 300 or so milliamps this is pulling around about a third of an amp at nine volts if i hit record you can see now it shoots up to around five, 600 milliamps. I am going to go and grab my Nikon D800 in its cage and all its glory. Well, half its glory because I've cannibalized a bunch of bits for the new GX80 camera rig. I use a dummy battery inside my D800 and on the end of it is the standard 5.5, 2.1 barrel jack connector. So with this one, I don't need to mess around adapting a whole bunch of cables. And let me see if I can angle this right. Keep an eye on the LCD there, see if that comes on. But this one, I can just plug straight in. Do we have any kind of power? Yes, there we go. So you can see now we are actually getting some power there. And you can see I can turn on the live view and we're drawing, right now we're drawing about uh, about a third of an amp, about the same, well, a little less, quarter of an amp, um, which is a little bit lower than this. But bear in mind, this has a sensor and an LCD on the back on all the time, or an EVF. This has nothing on right now. Right now it's just idling. We've dropped down to, oh, not bad, like 15 milliamps. But as soon as we turn on, like half press the shutter to kick the metering into life, we go up to about a quarter of an amp. And if we're focusing, you see that shoots up to about 600. If we actually turn live view on, turn that back on. There you go. Now we're at 700 milliamps just with live view on, and we're not even recording yet. Let me grab a memory card. I have one somewhere. If I put that in there, turn on live view, and I hit record, that, why is, oh, because I'm in that one. Now, if I hit record. Record with focus, we're, we're, we're approaching an amp. We're ooh, 0.99, can we get it over an amp? Oh, there we go, 1.01. .01. It flicked up for an instant and then went back down again. So the, the, the current on this really, really varies 
compares to the mirrorless that, that really don't demand a lot at all. Um, now this can handle one amp, but cameras like these, like you look at the D7000, that demands up to two and a half amps. And from what I've been told, the issue with it demanding that much is when you try to shoot continuously. So I'm gonna hold my AF lock button. Oh, and there you can see it's consistently over an amp and it actually shot up to about 1.3 something there. If I knock my shutter speed to bulb and just hold this open, because okay that's not too bad when you when you hold the shutter open on the dslr there's basically an, an, a super strong electromagnet there that, that's holding it open when you shoot continuously we got up to 1.46 there and this is a fairly slow camera this only shoots about five frames per second i think this one does six if you're shooting with a camera like a more recent one or a higher end one that does like you know 12 14 whatever frames per second that current is only going to go up and up and up and these can only put out two amps at nine volts but you don't have to be limited to two amps this one will actually put out three amps when it's delivering nine volts um i i don't need it for any of my cameras just because they don't really have those kinds of power demands um but you can see again if we plug this where's oh <laughs> I took the cable away with the Nikon. This will also support power delivery, but this one will deliver up to three amps, whereas these two will only deliver up to two amps. So depending on what camera you're using, it's something you'll want to bear in mind. If you've got a demanding camera that, you know, that perhaps has a, you know, a much bigger LCD or, um, you know, it's got a really, really high burst rate, higher than, you know, like the D7000 and the D800. Then you might want to consider getting a beefier USB battery that, that has three amp output at nine volts rather than two amp like these. But if you're using Panasonic, I've been told Sony has a similar low requirement to Panasonic. If you're using something like a, you know, like a mirrorless, and especially if you're only shooting video with it, like these two amp batteries work really, really well. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you this cable and and test it out for myself because it's a really really cool idea um hopefully i don't know what their plans are just yet but hopefully they're going to be working on a range of different power solutions for cameras to power them from usb batteries i don't know maybe we'll get dummy batteries that just have a type c on the end of it because i mean right now there, there's no markings at all on this to sort of say hey this is gonna put out nine volt you know don't expect this to be five volt um you know which is why i use a device like this when i plug in a new cable or a new device i haven't used before just to see exactly how much it's pulling um but yeah so hopefully you know hopefully they'll have a dummy battery with just a USB plug on the end of it at some point, which would be nice. But with the amount of different batteries you've got that are common for Sony, Nikon, Panasonic, Canon, and everybody else, that could end up being a lot of batteries. Not having to carry around all of these batteries for, you know, if I go out and do a photography shoot now, I have to take all of these with me because I've got like my Nikons that I use for my stills and now the Panasonics that I use for video. So I've got to take all of these out with me to be able to cover everything. If I could, you know, just take one or two of each and then have these as a backup to power the camera when these run out, then, then that would be a much better option. But for now, I think that's it. Let me know what you think. What do you think about these, these little cables? Do you like the idea of being able to power your camera off a power bank? Or do you prefer just keeping a bunch of, you know, spares handy? Or do you shoot video and, like me, you don't bother with a battery in the camera at all and just take power out of the DC output on the monitor? You know, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, but that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. I have a bunch of other videos in the works, especially now I've upgraded my video kit. Any questions, any suggestions, any comments, thoughts about these cables, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.